Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond This Games, and in this Game Maker tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to fade when you transition between rooms. This is going to be one in a multiple series of videos of doing different kinds of fades because there's lots of different ways to do it. So this is the simplest and the easiest way to do it. What we're going to need is one object, we're going to create it, and we're going to say obj fade. Now this project is actually a project you can find on my channel of just how to transition between rooms, but if you have a game set up where you're transitioning, then that's all that you're going to need. So we've got our obj fade. We're going to assign it a sprite, and this is just a black sprite, uh, filled in black, 64 by 64. The size isn't very important, but it needs to be around um, at least 30 or maybe 20, and you can have it be as large as you want. We're going to do a little bit of math inside of the object to make it fill up the entire screen very easily. So once we make the object, we're going to give it a create event. So we're going to go ahead and say um, set up fade object and inside of here because we want it to fill up the entire screen and I don't want to create a sprite that is huge we're actually just going to do that with code so I'm going to say image x scale times equals 100 and this is going to take this sprite and make it 6400 large because we're also going to say image y scale times equal 100 so that'll completely fill up any view that you're using, at least probably. If you're using a view larger than 6400 by 6400, then you should adjust this or you should make a larger sprite. And then we're going to say, we're going to create a uh, variable called fade speed, and this will allow you to adjust the fade speed very easily. Now, a good fade speed that I've found is 0.005. And this works at 30 FPS, so if you're going to make it even uh, longer at 60 FPS, then you're going to want it to be a smaller value. And lastly, we're going to set image alpha equal to 1. So this will be a completely black square filling up the screen immediately. Image alpha is what we're going to change over time. And to change it, we're going to add a step event. And now we're just going to add in one line of code that says image alpha minus equals fade speed. So we just want to lower that down. And when we do that, it's going to go from being completely black and covering the screen to being completely transparent. And at the end, we want to say if image alpha is less than or equal to zero, then we'll just destroy it. That way it doesn't stick around forever. Now, when our warp, we need to decide how we're going to do this. So, all we have to do actually is create the object when we touch the warp. If you have a different kind of warp system, then maybe you'll want to uh, kind of pause the game and then create the object or do it after you move them to the room and then make it so they can't move. There's different ways to handle that. But this is going to create the warp object and f fade in the screen. So I'm going to say instance create depth. I'm going to put this at 0, 0. And the depth I'm going to put at negative 9,999. That way it will for sure be on top. Because the lower the number is the closer it is to the screen. So there shouldn't be anything on top of the fade. Otherwise it won't cover it. And we're going to create obj fade. And so once we are creating this, the last thing that we have to do is make sure that our fade object is actually set to persistent because we're going to be creating it in one room and then immediately transitioning room. So if it's not persistent, you'll see absolutely nothing happen. So now if we run this, it should work exactly the way we've set it up. We run into the warp object and it fades. And it works for every warp object that you've got because it does the exact same thing every time. So you can slow it down with your fade speed, so we could make it really slow, or you can speed it up if you want it like that. You have complete control over how that works. So this gives it a nice kind of cinematic, opening, dramatic reveal. So you can change that as you need it to be changed. 
So that's what I've got for you. This is a simple fade between rooms, and if you want to see any more specific kinds of fades, let me know. I'm going to be doing some more on these because there are some really cool fades that you can do with some libraries that I've found out there. So thank you for joining me, and as always, have fun making great games, and I'll talk to you later.